Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another show of Iqam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, the Grand Ayatollah. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you today? Alhamdulillah. Fine. Masha. Sheikhna, um, last discussion was on wudu and what validates wudu when we went through the conditions. Um, I have a question in regards to if someone performs wudu, and someone then he does an action which invalidates the wudu. For example, he, he goes to the toilet, and later on he doesn't know which one was came first or after. So I'm not sure whether I did wudu first and then I invalidated the wudu, or did I go to the toilet first and then I performed wudu. What does one do in a situation like this? Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin. There are three points with this regard, mm -hmm. uh, three, let's say, scenarios to respond to this question. Um, number one, before saying Allahu Akbar, um, the doubt came and he's not sure if he did first the wudu or was first um, uh, relieving himself in the bathroom or other acts that voids the wudu. In this case, he needs to redo the wudu from new and pray. As, as far as there is a doubt, he cannot start the salah at, at all. So he needs to actually redo the wudu. The second point and the second scenario is that um, if this happened, this doubt happened within the salah, he was praying, he's in qunut, he's in ruku' and in sujood, and suddenly the doubt rises. Again, he needs to break that, the salah, and do the wudu again and pray again. While the, um, the doubt is within or before the salah, he needs to redo the wudu and the salah again. The third point and scenario is that if this case happened after he finished the salah, so he prayed, he finished the salah, before he gets up to go to his work, to his duties, he has this issue been raised as a doubt that did I uh, do the wudu first or relieve myself? So if, let's say if it's uh, Salat al-Asr, he needs to do the wudu and then pray Salat al-Asr again um, with, with the new wudu. But the previous Salah, because he, the doubt came after he finished the Salah, he doesn't have to redo really it again. Shaykhna, what happens in wudu when, it happens to wudu sometimes, when we're doing masa and the finger carries on onto the forehead, does that become uh, batil? And now my hand has kind of like got two waters on, can I do masa with that hand or not, on my foot? Basically, um, you can avoid uh, wiping your, your full hand um, on your feet, for example, by just wiping uh, with your palm of your hands, so okay. just to avoid the water which touched your forehead. Sheikh, now another question is in regards to water mixing, and this happens quite a lot. Is a lot of people when they do wudu, they turn the tap on, they start to do wudu. They don't turn the tap off because they don't want the water to can mix with other water or to be contaminated. Um, is it actually okay? Uh, to touch the taps doing wudu, so can I turn the tap on, wash my face, turn it off and then do my arms and such or should I try and refrain from cross-contamination? The amount of water which is on the tap, just, just a few drops, I don't think that would make any uh, effects on uh, the hands which is filled with moist and water. So if it, if it exceeds actually uh, the water which is on your hand more than the water which is on the tap itself, that should be fine. Otherwise, the, the, the issue is that to get new water, let's say you stretch your hand under the, the tap water and you get new water for masah and, and wiping, which is, that is the issue. Otherwise, these drops of water on the tap and so forth won't make any difference. I mean, that should be okay with this regard. Sheikh, now staying uh, with the conversation, discussion on mixing water, what is the ruling in regards to water mixing from the, the water on my face to with the water on my arms and, and such like? 
if let's say both arms uh, touched each another, for example, accidentally, um, these are all internal parts of the uh, wudu, so you don't have to actually do redo the wudu again. They, they are fine, so there's no objection on that. So let them touch; it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, working in, a, in an office environment, a lot of uh, the viewers are academic um, schools and universities. We get ink on our hands. Now, can we perform wudu with ink on our hands, or is it? I mean, is, is it vital that we remove the ink? Is, is, it, is it an obstacle for wudu? Well, the ink itself, as a color, it's not an obstacle at all. Um, so let it be, uh, let's say, um, ink in your hand, um, and then you just do the wudu over it, that's fine. But if that ink uh, constitutes of thickness, of mass of thickness, and prevents the reach of water to the skin, then you have to, of course, remove that paint, uh, that ink, which is like a paint, for example, painting the walls and, and decorative painting, which actually they have uh, some kind of thickness and mass. That should be removed. Otherwise, the let's say the, the pens, ink, and, and such like pencils, for example, won't be actually um, um, an obstacle unless if there is a mass and thickness. Ahsantam, Sheikhna. Sheikhna, what happens if um, I, I perform wudu and then I pray salah? And after I've prayed salah, I remember that, oh, I had a wound or a scratch or something on one of my parts of the body where I have to do wudu. Um, it may have been bleeding, it may not have. And I've already performed my salah. What do I do in a situation like that? If you show that you actually did the wudu, while your hand or arms or face uh, had that blood, najasa, that wound, and you actually perform the wudu, that wudu is batil and void because you actually did wudu with, with, with impurities, with najasa. So if that najasa is there and you did the wudu, um, then you have to repeat the wudu and you have to actually wash the parts which were najas because you actually transferred the the moist from one place to another. Um, otherwise, you know, usually we, when we go to the tap, tap of water, we just wash our hands and so forth. Then the jasa will el eliminate and, and goes. In this case, that's it's okay. You don't have to actually repeat your wudu or wash the parts of the wudu because it became yeah. tahran pure. Thank you. Um, I've got some questions that were sent in by some of the viewers and uh, in re relation to wudu and. With your permission, I'd like to ask you some. Um, if the person performing wudu thought that wiping his feet was not complete, does he have to start his wudu from the beginning or is it okay to repeat just the wiping? No, they can actually just go back from the tips of their toes and wipe again. So let's say they did half, half the way wiping and they stopped. They can go back again and do another wiping. That's fine. There's no objection with that. Thank you, Sheikh. Now, another question sent in. When performing wudu, is it permissible to lift up the foot when wiping it? It doesn't matter. You can lift it up. You can, you can uh, bend down and wipe your feet. It's, it's up to you. I mean, the, the, the most important thing about uh, wiping in overall, this is, uh, I think, the case we have to mention for our viewers, that when you want to wipe your head or the feet, you have to make sure that you are in, in a stable position. Okay. And you have to make sure that your hand wipes, not your head moves and wipes. Okay. So it has to be that with the act of your hand actually wipes the head and the feet and not by moving your head towards um, the other position or by moving your both feet to actually um, achieve the, the mess and the wiping. So you have to be in a stable position and you make sure that the hands, they actually do the wipings and not your feet or your head. Another question sent in. Is it permissible to perform wudu with ice? You know, if it produces moisture or drops when touched by the hand. So I'm, 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 I'm guessing that when you have a block of ice or you have some ice, if you rub it on your hand long enough, some of it melts and turns into water. Can you use that for wudu? Yes, as far as uh, 
the Hakam concern that if, if the, the moist or the drops of water move from one part to another to achieve what is known as the wash, al-ghasl, that's important. So it's not just you rub the ice on, on your hand. You have to have some kind of drops of water and moist moving from one part to another to achieve uh, the washing. That's the important thing. MashaAllah. Another question sent in. Is it haram to touch the script of the Quran with any part of the body without having wudu? With regard to the verse of the Holy Quran, you must make sure that um, you are in a state of tahar and purity. As the Quran says, لا يمسه إلا المطهرون Those who are pure would be able to, to touch the Holy Quran. So you have to make sure that you're in a state of tahara and purity. So when you touch the verses, you have the wudu. Yes. Without the wudu, you cannot touch uh, the verses haram. To touch them without wudu. What about um, touching the, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the names of the ma'asumin? Uh, do you have to have wudu for that as well? With regard to the ma'asumin alayhum as salam, the Sayyid says that it is the mustahab, ihtiyat uh, istihbabi, you know, mustahab with precaution that the one should have the wudu, which means it's not wajib, but it's better, you know, respecting the holy names of Ahl Bayt alayhi salam, on top of them, the, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So it's important that we respect these issues and take it into consideration that we have the wudu and tahara uh, whenever we want to touch their holy names. But it's, it's not wajib and, and uh, obligatory Except for the verses of the Holy Quran and the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, which is in the Quran as, you, as, a, as, a, as a holy name. Um, that exception, otherwise, um, for the holy names of Ahl Bayt and the Prophet, it's uh, mustahab to, with precaution, that we do the wudu, otherwise it's, it's not wajib. Is it wajib to prevent children and uh, those people who are, let's say, not mentally stable, uh, don't, we don't call them sane. Is it wiser to prevent them from touching the Quran? Or do we have to perform, or do they have to perform wudu, or make sure that they have done wudu properly in order to touch the Quran? It's not obligatory and wajib to prevent the children from touching the verses of the Holy Quran. But if that actually uh, causes disrespect to the holy verses. Let's say the child wants to rip the, the Holy Quran's page, for example, or, or throw it in the bin, for example. In this, in such situations, then we have to stop them. Of course, it's some kind of disrespect to the Holy Quran. Otherwise, because they are not mukallaf, they are they're not in a position of the taklif, and the duties are not bound to them, and. Uh, the wajibat is not bound to them to actually to practice them. So they're still children and in the age of uh, childhood. So we don't really press on them too much on the ahkam issue because they're not the ones who were told to, uh, to carry out the duties. You know, Kutub alaykum as for example, those who, or you who believe uh, you have to start fasting and so forth, praying, all the ahkam, hajj. So they haven't reached the level of Ya Ayyuhu Ladina Amanu to carry out these obligatory acts of ahkam. Asan Shaykh, now thank you very much. And thank you to all our viewers joining us on this discussion. If you have a question that you would like to send in, please send it to the contact details provided. And inshallah, myself or the Shaykh will try and answer your questions. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.